All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Rebels by John Jakes, book number two in the Kent family chronicles this book came out in 1975 let's talk about the covers first and then the series as a whole and then we'll get into the book review a little bit so anyway um this is i've got i've got all the books in hardcover as you can see now uh, book number one the bastard i already reviewed that on the channel if you want to watch that review before you watch this one just type in bastard and Durfee into your YouTube search engine and that book review will magically appear upon your television screen. So this is book number one. Now we're to book number two. It's I'm holding it up backwards. Book number two, The Rebels. Okay, so covers first. Okay, so I really like the covers for both the paperbacks and I like these old-timey covers that the hardcovers have, but I also like kind of the paperback version. And it will, we'll pan over here a little bit. So the paperback versions all match. They've all got the, a similar theme with a, a little illustration in the middle with the scroll work and then, the, you know, the nice font for the author. And then, as you can see here, um, when we hold them all up together... The spines all match, so that looks really nice on the shelf. So the paperbacks get an A for the cover work. And I say that the um, hardcovers also get an A because each hardcover, the covers all have a similar theme. And when you put them all together here on the shelf, looking at just the spines... They all look pretty damn cool also. So I like both covers. Now I don't know who the illustration... I don't know who the illustrators were for any of them. The illustrators are not mentioned anywhere in the book for either hardcover or paperback. So what can, what can you do? So a brief um, explanation of what happened in book number one. The Kent Family Chronicles uh, starts out with... Uh, well, also, I will show you this. In the paperbacks, this is not in the hardcovers, but in the paperbacks, we get a family tree of all the Kent family chronicles characters throughout the generations, because this is a generational saga. It starts in the um, mid-1700s in England, no, actually in France, where our main character... Um, God, what is his name? I've forgotten his name already. It's all here on my notes. Um, Philip Kent. I was going to say Felipe, but that didn't seem right. Philip Kent is our main character, and he, he grows up in France as a bastard. That's why the book is called The Bastard. He immigrates to America. He has a lot of adventures in France in this book. He immigrates to America, and he uh, lands in Boston just a few years before the Revolutionary War is going to start. Now, book number two is where we pick up with Philip Kent as a little bit of an older man. Um, and he is, in, and, we're, and, and the Revolutionary War is beginning, right at the beginning of this book. So it starts out, um, our, our guy Philip Kent is like, like now thrust into the war. And um, the subsequent books, I mean, this series, I think I think it goes all the way up from the 1750s all the way up to almost 1900, if I remember correctly. I've read all these once. I'm reading them again for the channel. Um, so let's talk about this book, The Rebels. Uh, we'll put this over here. Hold this one up. Now, my vision is getting bad, folks. So I, I'm going to have to do something maybe from now on that I don't normally do, and that is hold my notes up close to my face as I do the book review because I'm just getting to be an old man. And the blindness is not getting better. <laughs> so, 
Philip Kent. Yes, the, I just go through the notes that I've read here or, or took as I was reading this. Up. So the British that starts in Boston. Philip Kent, he's, he's still a young man. Uh, the British, there's an overwhelming force of British soldiers in Boston. Uh, the Revolutionary War is just about to start. You can feel it in the air. Um, uh, the Redcoats and the Americans, there, there's skirmishes here and there. Things are getting to a boiling port, point. And then in the, first, in the first ever battle that they have, which Philip Kent gets to take part in, it's in Boston there, and, and the English soldiers, the Redcoats, just march in line, in order... That's how they go to fight, which just boggles my mind that that the battle strategy tactics were so god-awful shitty that they would just clump together with bright red coats. I mean, that's why that's, the book is red. I mean, it's like... It's like you couldn't make yourself a bigger, more obvious target, and and the and the and the revolutionary Americans they notice this right off. They're like, well, they're just they're just walking towards us with their muskets, and yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of them, but and so they the, the British take a, a, a you know, and the musket fire, the musket fire is just insane, um, and the British take a beating. They do. I mean, it's just like the battle tactics are so poor. They've got such an overwhelming force, but their battle tactics are so poor that they just get, they take a beating. And, and that's literally how we, we won the Revolutionary War eventually. But it just, John Jakes does a good job of pointing out the sheer stupidity of that, um, especially as we see it through the eyes of the rebels, the revolutionaries, the Americans. We see it through their eyes, and they're just kind of like, well, if that's the way they're going to do it, that's the way they're going to do it, we'll just take them out. Um, so, um... Our main guy, Philip Kent, is now embroiled in the Revolutionary War, but he's, he's, he's young and he's just newly married and he's got a young wife named Anna who's pregnant. And um, so he's worried about all of that as he goes to the battlefront and then he comes back to visit his wife. He goes to the battlefront. And it's just, it's like, I think that what these books make me appreciate is these soldiers and these people that lived in the time in Boston during this Revolutionary War. I mean, the war was happening right in their neighborhood. I mean, their children were right there. Their wives and, and families were just down the street. and or, or maybe the battle was taking place a little ways out of Boston. So they'd go out there and then they'd come back once in a while to visit their family. And it's just absolute bonkers to think of, of that. I mean, we're, we're lucky that we live in the day and age that we do or, and the, or that we are not living in a country like the Ukraine that's being, that has having to deal with this stuff. Um, at least, you know, and if you're watching from the Ukraine or whatever, you know, God bless. So, the antagonist of the story is a guy named Judd Fletcher. Now, he's a dashing, handsome, but evil guy. He's got evil intent. Um, now, he lives down in Virginia. He's a slave owner. And even back in the Revolutionary War days, which uh, John Jakes points out, there was a contention between slave owners and non-slave slave owners. The North did not want slaves at the time, and the South wanted them. I mean, there was a fraction... And that was, God, a hundred years before the Civil War. This was, this was an issue even back before the country was even a country. But, uh, you know, guys like Judd Fletcher, they just as soon kind of live under British rule a little bit um, just because they get to keep their slaves and um, nobody would bother them. But they knew that if the country was to kind of uh, form... You know, things might change. They might lose their uh, plantations and stuff like that. And anyway, he's got his friend George Lark. They just, George, George Lark and uh, Judd Fletcher, they are the antagonists. And then the Fletcher family. So the Kent family is sort of the protagonist of the series. The Fletcher family now kind of becomes the bad guys for the rest of the series. And we kind of get to see how these two families sort of have major conflict Throughout the history of the United of the history of and building of the United States, um, and can, speaking of that, we get cameos from John Adams, Ethan Allen, and the Green Mountain Boys. Uh, Paul Revere. I mean, we get one of the things that John Jakes does really well is incorporate the historical figures into the lives of our fictional characters. 
And we get to see these fictional characters get to meet some of these great people like George Washington and John Adams and Ethan Allen and Paul Revere and all of this stuff. And they get to in interact with Ben Franklin and intermingle and and, and sometimes the, uh, character, the some of the famous people that we know who they are become not main characters in this series, but sort of, you know, bit players. But it's always fun when they show up. And uh, it's just a great adventure story. Great historical novels. Um, I love this series. One of my favorite historical series of all time, as you can see. I've got hardcovers of each book. And I've got paperbacks of each book. I don't have Audible. You know, usually I have Audible.com versions of a lot of this stuff, too. But I don't have the Audible versions of this. I don't think they're available. I might be wrong about that. I know I've got the North and South trilogy by John Jakes on Audible, but I don't think the Kent Family Chronicles are out. But anyway, The Rebels, book number two, uh, 10 out of 10. If you just love his greatly written historical fiction with magnificent characters that you root for and evil villains that you hate, you can't go wrong with anything that John Jakes does. 10 out of 10.